Hello everyone, all who are in one body of Christ, our Savior welcomes to this day, O Lord, His goodness together. Today I'm meditating upon, Destined for Eternity by Grace, Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 16 to chapter 6, verse 11. The picture of the worldly life the preacher portrayed in the book of Ecclesiastes shows the real contrast from the book of Proverbs. The observations in Proverbs are largely positive, but in Ecclesiastes, preachers are largely projected negative aspects of his experience of worldly life. Proverbs offers hope that the righteous will be blessed and the wicked will be punished, but Ecclesiastes exposes all the worldly exceptions to Proverbs' rules. The simplest explanation is that Proverbs demonstrates how the world should be and Ecclesiastes exposes the worldly life, but at the same time it points us to focus on eternity. Oppressors are rewarded with more power while the oppressed are left destitute. Hard work to achieve worldly blessings without him doesn't always pay off and vanishes quickly before we realize. And even when God brings blessings, we are unable to understand how and where to use and often use to receive earthly satisfaction that starts at night and before the morning it vanishes with pain and suffering. We end up making our own blessings, curses for ourselves. This futility, the preacher says, is a test where struggles are many, but rewards are none. Because our aim is not at the target for the purpose we are mad, the longer we live and the more we read, the more obvious life's futility will become. We will see more and more examples of the book of Proverbs not playing out, more and more evidence that we lived in a cursed world. This test is designed to push us towards trust in God and away from trusting the world. In some places, the preacher intensifies our testing by comparing humans to animals. Like animals, we're driven by competition appetite. We work because we envy our neighbor. Like animals, we're never satisfied. Animals and humans share the same fate. From dust we came, and to dust we will return. The relentless animalistic futility of the cursed world is always testing us. Will we remain in despair that everything is meaningless? The answer is no. We have perfect hope, the hope that is promised after the curse in Genesis. It is to fix the corruption and brokenness of this world, making all things new. Focus on Jesus Christ, who completed all at once to remove the curse from all who believe in him by paying the huge price to fix the justice, removing the stony heart and replacing with the heart of flesh that carries the right motives not to envy instead bless others and enjoy their blessings. Living a life selfless rather than hoarding all for self-satisfaction. No one felt the weight of this test more completely than Jesus. Justice did not win while Jesus lived. He was falsely accused by his jealous oppressors. His friends abandoned him and like competitive animals, The Pharisees stripped and flayed Jesus' skin to protect their power. Not satisfied with the beating, they chanted, Crucify him. But in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus had a choice. He could despair over the state of the cursed world and avoid it all, or he could trust God more than futility of the world. And Jesus passes the test. He chooses to experience futility by taking responsibility for a curse that he did not cause, yet be punished as if he had. Three days later, Jesus proves that neither his death nor our lives are meaningless or futile. Jesus rises from the dead and proves that neither futility nor the curse is the final world. God does. In Jesus, the futility observed by the preacher will be reversed. Justice will win. The oppressors will be punished and the oppressed will be lifted up. Our hard work won't end in futility but will be rewarded eternally. Our lives will be full of meaning when we trust Jesus' resurrection as more true than futility of the cursed world. Our suffering and futility are transformed in moments of despair into moments where God's power and hope will be shown. This message also gives a promise today. today. The promise is, each time he said, my grace is all you need, my power works best in weakness, so now I am glad to boast about my weakness so that the power of Christ can work through me. Let's close this time in prayer to go. Please join me in this prayer. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, my dear wonderful God, Lord, thank you, Father, that you know the end from the beginning and that everything under heaven is within your authority. 
Thank you that you are in control of all that is happening in my individual life and the wider world in general. May I trust you that all through circumstances of my life and as I seek your face in prayer and praise, may I learn more and more to pray. Thy will be done in my life and throughout the world. In Jesus' holy name I pray, amen. Have a blessed day, one of God's when you talk to you tomorrow.